Hi, welcome to Real People. I'm Stephanie Allensworth. My guest today is Betty Jo Arnett. She is a homeopath and also the president of the Minnesota Homeopathic Association. Welcome to Real People, Betty Jo. Thank you very much. Thanks it's for being here. wonderful to be here. Oh, thank you, thank you. So yeah. happy to have you. And what a topic, homeopathic uh, remedies are so the rage right now. Right. And uh, I know that you have a ton to tell us. You're also an author. I should have said okay. that right up front. She's got her book here with us. We'll talk a little bit about what's in that. Sure. And then we can talk a little bit about you and how you got started into the homeopathic path. Yes. Homeopathic path. There you go. <laughs> well, I was introduced to homeopathy by the dentist that I worked for. I was a dental hygienist. Ah. And um, he was transitioning his practice from being a conventional dental practice into being a holistic practice. Ah. And he took a two-year um, homeopathy course. And um, he referred me to go and take one of my children. I have three sons. And from some trauma that he had experienced, and we'd done some um, counseling and stuff. So I took him, and then, then he referred me to a medical doctor who was in his class who was also a homeopath. So I came to homeopathy with a lot of credibility, even though this was like in 1990, mm. when in the state of Minnesota, homeopaths, there weren't a lot of them. You know, so um, I went to this doctor and um, he treated actually all of my children, my husband, myself, and we had some really miraculous things happen and one I can share with you that really convinced me about the effectiveness of homeopathy. My youngest son woke up one night in the middle of the night screaming bloody murder because he had an ear infection. Mm. And literally he had, it was draining, there was blood. I mean, he was in so wow. much pain. So the next day I take him to see the doctor and figuring I'm gonna get antibiotics. And he said, no, we're gonna put him on pulsatilla. And I said, you're kidding me. And he said, no, he said in 10 days, he'll be just fine. And in 10 days, he was just fine. And the thing that, um, I was concerned about because my um, paternal grandmother was deaf from the time she was very young from ear infections. Mm. So I was really afraid. But after being treated with homeopathy for that infection, he never had another ear infection. That's incredible. And that was incredible. That was really a testimony to me that this stuff really works. And then I became more interested. I was still cleaning teeth. And um, one day I just mentioned to him that maybe I would go and become a naturopath. And he said, why do you want to do that? You know, they have a school of homeopathy here that's just opening. And in two weeks, I was in school. Uh, and nice. then um, it was a four-year program. Mm. And we were the first graduating class. And, you know, homeopathy at the turn of the 1900s was actually very huge in Minnesota. Mm. And the University of Minnesota actually had a homeopathic wing. And there were lots of pharmacies here in Minnesota. But um, when things change with the pharmaceutical companies and that medical model, then homeopathy kind of went underground. And we have to thank the hippie gener generation for bringing <laughs> that natural medicine back into view, you know. And um, I can relate with that. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have them to thank. So I was in the first graduating class. Nice. And at that time, um, we had to be careful how we presented ourselves. I was a dental hygienist. I was a, I had a license. I wanted to make sure I protected that license. Mm -hmm. That's how I was helping to support my family. So um, I became part of um, the group that helped get the law in Minnesota to protect holistic practitioners. Really? And Minnesota became, they are only one of about 13 states that are actually safe harbor states where um, the homeopath, the cranial sacral person, the massage therapist, mm -hmm. all of those people can practice safely in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, and that happened in 2000. I remember when just uh, getting a massage or going to a chiropractor was like considered mm -hmm. taboo. 
Right. You know, so yeah. Right. In 2000, so, it's amazing. Yeah, it's been now 24 years that we've mm. had that law. And um, there has been some um, movement to get that law in other states. But in other states, for example, in Wisconsin, the people that are holistic there, they practice under tribal law. Oh. Because they're protected, being part of a tribe, and so there are different ways. Now, in throughout the world, homeopathy is practiced. Mm -hmm. Basically, in many places, it's much larger than it here is here in the United States. But it is growing, and it's more readily available to people than it was back then. You know. Yeah. But tell me about this. This. Uh, Whatever it was, I don't remember the name of the the medicine that your son was given. Oh, the um, the remedy that he was given was pulsatilla. What is that? And pulsatilla is a plant remedy. Our remedies come from many different sources. They come from plants, minerals, mm. metals, um, animals. A lot of mm. venoms are used. I know um, about that one. Yep, yep. and. Um, and then some things that, um, like magnets, um, um, they're very different, uh, even x-rays, yes, copper, a lot mm. of them come from that. And so the advantage of using a homeopath, rather than going to many of the outlets that you can go to and just choosing something, mm -hmm. is working with a classical homeopath that has been trained in a school, um, you're able to closer identify the remedy that will help you, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, if I come upon someone that's been in an accident, usually the first remedy that we think of is Arnica Montana, which is also made from a plant remedy. Okay. And um, it's a well-known, uh, actually that is the one homeopathic remedy that is making inroads into um, uh, plastic surgery oh. because it's so helpful it helps the body move fluid away from the injury so we always think of arnica as a first response remedy but if but it, I isn't that a cream too that they have it in a cream okay. they have it in oil and then you can take the homeopathic pellets that you can get and you put them under your tongue and let oh. them dissolve. Okay. And basically homeopathy is energy. The creams and things that you get, the oils, like you can get Arnica oil and things mm -hmm. like that, that's actually the, the tincture that you're using. But um, Hahnemann, who developed homeopathy back in the late 1700s, he was a German physician and he did not like the toxic effect of herbs. Mm. So he wondered how far he could dilute them and they would still continue to work. And so all of the remedies that we work with today are not in the, the pure, the tincture or the pure substance. They are diluted remedies. Mm. And some of them are diluted beyond Avogadro's number, which means if you would take it to a lab, they would find nothing in there other than water and maybe some alcohol to preserve the, the substance, but it's a signal. Hmm. And so because now we have cell phones and we work with signals all the time, you know, I can, I've got a lanyard that I can turn on a whole bunch of things and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, people are becoming to understand homeopathy a little bit different than they did actually when I first graduated. Well, yeah, because it was taboo. I mean, it, right. And it was, uh, I don't know if you want to go into the history a little bit about how how it got chased underground because right. of a you know, particular wealthy businessman that was. Right, so um, homeopathy away. came to the United States in probably the early 1800s. Mm -hmm. And um, Hahnemann lived, actually Hahnemann lived to be in his, in his 80s. Mm. He lived a long time. Yeah. In those days, but yeah. That's that a was a very long time. I think time. 45 was the mean. Right. But I think it was Nash that brought homeopathy to the United States. And during the Civil War, they used um, homeopathy in more of a symptomatic approach 
thumb to control bleeding and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Whereas the classical homeopath is actually trained to look at the, the body, the physical body, the mental body, how we think and compute, and the emotional body. And we put all those things together mm. when we are prescribing. But after the Civil War, things kind of changed and homeopathy became more symptomatic, treated that way. Mm. So um, then also, um, the pharmaceutical industry was formed late 1800s early 1900s and you know homeopath homeopathic remedies can't be patented no. because they're natural exactly okay mm -hmm. so what the pharmaceutical people do is they will take a substance from a phenol from the pulsatilla and do testing and seeing what it will control, what it will help, and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then they can patent it. Yeah. So that's when we really lost the um, the ability to use homeopathy. Um, there were some other things that were were done. Uh, I believe it was the Flexner report that all of this stuff changed how homeopathy and it, it was really seen. They were seen as quacks. Yeah. So um, it was really the hippie generation that brought back more holistic um, techniques and traditional medicine. And the traditional medicine has been handed down. That's been an oral tradition since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, although homeopathy does have a system of proving or what we would look at as, as a scientific study, um, we still do those provings today. And that's how we get our information about, like, for example, the pulsatilla that I told mm -hmm. you about my son, okay? Pulsatilla usually has um, um, a green, anything that's green, any mucus or anything like that, that is a keynote for Pulsatilla. Mm. And um, plus the crying. Uh, <laughs> people that need Pulsatilla usually weep very easily and everything. And, you know, the doctor looked at it and he said he's getting Pulsatilla, which is one of our common um, remedies yeah. that we use in ear infections. And the great part is that it helps the body balance itself. So homeopathy, along with all of the traditional, the native kinds of healers that have mm -hmm. handed down their information, they work with that energy that flows through the body. They work mm -hmm. with, in homeopathy, we call it the vital force. And it's the body's ability to correct itself or to heal itself. So that's what we look for in prescribing a remedy for if you came to me um, as a client is I look for a remedy that will touch you on not only the physical body but emotional and the mental body. And the, the uh, presentation or the story mm -hmm. that you tell me helps me kind of connect the dots. Ah through the story yeah, and then I can match it to approving of a substance that we have collected from the time that Hahnemann, the first remedy that he proved was quinine. Oh, sure. And, yeah. um, and so we have all these other um, uh, remedies uh, that we can choose from and that's what makes homeopathy very complicated for the conventional medical doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So years ago, when I was actually still in school, I was asked to come up north to Grand Marais and do some presentations to people up there. So um, there were a couple of medical doctors that was in my presentation. And one said, homeopathy is too complicated. You know, 10 people come in with a rash and you give them 10 different remedies because it depends upon what the emotional and the, the mental symptoms are. Oh. Okay, so it's like, this is too complicated. I just want to give them, um, you know, uh, cortisone yeah. cream is what I want to give them. And then the other doctor said, well, I tried homeopathy once and it didn't work. And I said, well, what happened? And he said, well, I sprained my ankle and I took some Arnica Montana. And I said, okay. So what potency did you take? And he said, well, it was a 12C. And I said, how many times did you take it? And he said, well, I took it once. 
<laughs> and I said, well, that's kind of like taking an Excedrin, you know, having an Excedrin headache and you take a baby aspirin once, you know. <laughs> yeah. So the advantage of working with people that are trained classically mm -hmm. is that they help you go through this process of how, what remedy you need and yeah. how long you need the remedy. So going back when I was telling you how if I come up across someone that's been in an accident mm -hmm. and they say to me, okay, I'm fine, go and help everybody else. That is a keynote symptom of Arnica. They send the doctor away. Mm -hmm. That's the remedy they need is Arnica yeah, Montana, okay. okay? But if they say to me, am I gonna die? That's a different remedy. Huh. Or if they're crying and saying, now I'm afraid because I've broken my leg, my my family is not going to accept me and love me, that's a different remedy. Yeah. Or if they say, I'm going to now be late to work and I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, I might lose my job, that is a different remedy. So it's not an easy system for people to self-prescribe. Yeah, but it sounds amazing, actually. Um, and, and how brilliant taking all of the components of the right. vital uh, self and right. putting them together and understanding that they're not just one thing. It's right. not just a broken ankle, it's everything that goes with it. Right. And uh, yeah, like I am amazed, I had no idea. Yeah. So thank you for that. So for example, um, I was listening to one of our fellow homeopaths today, he's from Australia and he was telling us about his last client was an eight year old boy. And he has an ankle that's bothering him. And the ankle's been bothering him for a year. They've been to all the doctors, and the doctors say there's nothing wrong with the ankle. So then the question that the classical homeopath is going to ask is, okay, this has been hurting for a year. What was going on in your life a year ago? Mm. So if there was a trauma, and usually there is a trauma, whether it be a physical trauma or an emotional trauma, then we take that into consideration. Oh, yeah. And sometimes the emotional piece is the key to finding what the disturbance is in that vital force that allows the body to balance. And either the energy is flowing too quickly or it's not flowing quick enough, mm -hmm. and either way, the body can't use the nutrients that they're getting from their food, from their supplements, and all of that kind of stuff. D does that kind of go with the idea that sometimes you have a trauma that you're not even aware of, or that you've buried it so deeply that your brain ends up taking over and saying, now I gotta give you physical pain to make you deal with this? Is that um, same same path. Yes, yeah. and one of the cases that I had that was um, a wonderful case. It was the woman was my meditation teacher, mm. and she had taught. She was in her sixties. She had taught meditation for a very long period of time. She was a nurse, so she knew a lot about her physical body and and her emotional body. And I ended up, um, all, her story, the thread that I saw in her story was about being um, angry mm. with indignation. How dare they have treated me like that? Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I put her on a, a remedy called Staphysagria because that is the remedy for, uh, we see it a lot after surgeries. Um, when people are unhappy with the way they were treated by the doctor, mm. they'll say, how dare they treat me that mm -hmm. way, you know? Yeah. The woman that um, is having a baby and um, needs to have an episiotomy and the doctor that delivers it and she has a relationship with this doctor and he lets an intern come in and do the surgery and they're saying, how could they do that to me, you know? Those are perfect Staphysagria type moments. So okay. anyway, I gave her Staphysagria. And it was wonderful because she was able to connect with me when she could see shifts happening. Oh. And she would say, you know, I had a dream about this and I'm able now to release that. She went all the way back to the first time that she remembers being angry with indignation was when she came from her mother's room, a room and oh. they picked her up and put her in a cold stainless steel bowl 
and it was like, how dare they do that to me, you know? So wow. it, we look for that unraveling. Yeah. And that's why you want to stay com connected with someone that can help you look at that. And sometimes we even do refer people to do um, uh, counseling, okay. especially if there's been sexual abuse and things mm -hmm. like that, because mm -hmm. once they're on a remedy, sometimes things can start to unravel and they need to talk with someone about how to cope with right. some of the stuff that's coming up. Right. So it's a little bit more even than the homeopath yeah. because we're releasing stuff that should be dealt with. Yeah, yeah, because that can okay. be unnerving, I can, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, if, yeah, all of a sudden this, you know, basically vomiting out of you. And, exactly. And, and you don't know how to deal with it. Right. And sometimes that trauma comes from our genetics. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I had a gentleman come to me one time and um, he had dealt a lot with um, metals mm -hmm. and mercury and um, that he was a, like a metallurgist or something, yeah. you know, but he was only there for maybe a half an hour and he said, do you think my problem is that I feel guilty as if I've committed a crime? And he said, I don't know why I feel that way. But he said, do you think it could be that my great-grandfather um, killed someone and he was never brought to justice? He picked up his family. He left the state. This would, was back in the like mm -hmm. early 1800s. Yeah, before they could track him. Before somebody. they could track him, um, you know, before there was DNA testing yeah. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And he was never brought to justice. And he said... My grandfather had the same issues. My father had the same issues. Mm. And now I feel like I am guilty as if of a crime. And that's right out of my book of symptoms <laughs> and yeah. all the remedies that will help with yeah. that. You know? Oh my so, gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, it can be really fascinating. So, so then we have to decide, you know, are we dealing with stuff that happened now or is it history? Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, wow. Uh, so let me ask you this, because I, I know that there's people out there trying microdosing, and I'm wondering, you know, like mushrooms, microdosing mushrooms and things like that, mm -hmm. it's becoming uh, a bigger and bigger thing. I mean, I've never done it myself, but it, it, what do you think of that? So I'm not familiar with the term microdosing. Are you talking about taking a mushroom and diluting the substance? I, I guess. I don't really know. Okay. But I, that's the term that they use, microdosing, like you're just taking a little, little bitty bit of it, like you don't even feel it or whatever, but, okay. and, and that it somehow helps. But, I, you know, I had that question asked of me, and I... I couldn't mm -hmm. answer it. So I'm thinking, wow, you're the greatest person. To well, ask this we do have remedies that are made from mushrooms. Okay. Yeah, we do. But then our, this might be different. It might be that they're just uh, taking a small piece of the mushroom, and mm -hmm. then the energy that comes with that mushroom is able to help them shift. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah, all within, righty. Within the body. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't know that much. I was just checking to see if yeah. you did, but I, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Everything well, has power. Even this table mm, has... Everything's energy. Everything is energy. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a machine, an electrodermal screening machine, that has over 70,000 signals in mm -hmm. it. So all the homeopathic remedies, most of all of them that I work with, um, some of the newer provings I don't have in there, but I have the electrical measurement and when I test people, and I, I use the acupuncture channels, mm. and I can see if um, the, the machine will come up with what signal is it pulling up. Sometimes mm. it pulls up a mold, sometimes it's a parasite, mm. sometimes it's a metal, and then I can go to the homeopathy file and pull up the homeopathic remedy that will counter mm. that. So like even this table, this book, the water, everything has a signal. And everything can be used to heal if it depends upon what the signal is within the person and what the disturbance is of right. that energy that runs through us. Yeah. So. Wow. That, that's amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, this one's about the dentistry, correct? 
Um, yes, and I worked uh, for Dr. Ron King. He has passed away now, and um, holistic dentistry has to do with um, those kinds of things, and actually this research was done back in the early uh, 1900s by Weston Price and the Mayo Brothers mm. and how um, root canals can affect the health of people and um, also bridges across the midline, mercury fillings and all of that. So, you know, I love to talk about teeth and I would love to come back another time and yeah. talk to you about teeth. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Good I health got a begins with your I teeth. Got the, I yeah. got the yeah. fillings and I've been trying to get rid of them, you know, one yeah. at a time. But uh, you brought some other things here too. Yes, what else did I you just, bring to show I us? wanted people to see that um, this is a product that you can get over the, um, you can go to any drugstore, you can go to Walmart, any of the big stores, and you can pick up these products, and these do have homeopathic remedies in it. This is called Cold Calm. It's a combination remedy, and you will get relief from this, okay? Okay. But this is actually the kit. When we were talking about um, the number of different remedies that are used for, this happens to be a flu kit. Oh. So yeah. there's all of these remedies and the people's response when they have the flu will be different. And so we can use a different um, remedy yeah. for different things. Whether it's they can't take their head off the pillow to their vomiting, do they have no fever, all different kinds of things. And I'd, um, I got this from the medical doctor who is my homeopath. Um, he does sell these. I usually don't sell them um, except to people who are already clients sure. because it's very complex and it yeah, comes with uh, a little book. So would you take a little bit of each one of these things or what? what how you would that probably work? take one and, and I don't know as you can see this, but you know, they're little tiny pellets that are in there and you just take a cap full oh. of them and um, you look in here, you try and match your symptoms to one of these. Oh, now this okay. one is, okay, this is tuberculinum. And so if we go in this little kit, it gives you some of the symptoms that are going to be um, coming up with tuberculinum. And of course, right now I can't find it. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't okay. thinking about doing that. But um, so, yeah, it's very specific yeah. how you're going to use it. Amazing. I've yeah. never had the flu, not once in my life. You know, I think I've only had the flu one time. And yeah. it was a, a gelsemium flu, which is another plant remedy <laughs> where you can't even lift your head off the pillow. <laughs> And that will turn you around. But wow. So if, if people keep in mind, you know, really what homeopathy is about is the vital force and getting it um, balanced mm -hmm. so that your body can use the energy from the food you eat, from um, everything around you. Right. Well, yeah. Betty Jo, we have to have you back. We are already it, out of time, if you can believe be that. To it do went that. that. It went that fast. But we have... A, I have lots more questions, so Good. we have to have you back. And I really say thank you for everything that you're doing you're with your wonderful. holistic pra practice and and just you know being out there and helping humanity because yeah. that's what this is about right now. That's what this show is about: being of service and right. um, you know keeping it real. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank so. you very much. And um, I do take limited clients now, okay. um, usually from referrals, but yeah. anybody that sees this um, program okay. that would want to contact me, I would be happy to okay. talk with them either by my email, bjoholmes 7 at Hotmail, or my, my text message, 612-599-6288. Okay. That, we'll have that up on the screen for Great. you as well at the beginning and at the end. So. Sure. Uh, we can make sure that people that need your help can find you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to You're sign welcome. us out. So thank you again for keeping it real. We'll see you next time. I'm Stephanie Ellsworth, and this is Betty Jo Arnett. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>